We are pleased to announce a new major release and product name change. Our former solution, SecureAuth ADP, is now the SecureAuth Identity Platform, and our kickoff release, version 19.07, includes deployment freedom with cloud, hybrid, and on-premises options, enhanced security with additional adaptive layers and a new biometric authentication method, and more user-friendly and flexible administration. Hi, I'm Stacy from SecureAuth, and in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to integrate Office 365 with a customized adaptive authentication policy and user-friendly and secure multi-factor authentication methods from which your users can choose during login. In the SecureAuth Identity Platform web admin, navigate to multi-factor methods to enable and configure your global multi-factor authentication methods to use in your organization. You will see here the ones that are enabled and disabled out of the box. If you want to enable any of them, simply click the edit icon here and switch it from off to on and configure any of the settings present in the screen. We group various methods in our authentication apps, for example, and out of the box we have the time-based passcode automatically enabled. To enable the others, you will also click the pencil icon here and simply check them and set any of the configurations required. The authentication apps also includes our new MFA method, the biometric identification, where users can use their fingerprint or facial recognition to accept a login request and log into the application. Click Save. And now you'll see that on authentication apps, you now have the login notification and biometric identification enabled. These can be updated and changed at any time, and they are applied to the policies in which you select which MFA methods to use to create a more flexible workflow. Once you've enabled your global multi-factor authentication methods, you can move on to your policies to create a list of adaptive rules and to enable those specific multi-factor authentication methods in your policies for your users to choose during login. SecureAuth Identity Platform ships out of the box a default policy with some best practices on our adaptive rules. You can edit this policy at any time by clicking Edit Default Policy. Here you can see the authentication rules that are already provided out of the box. These can be edited, they can be removed, or you can add new rules to this. Once you're complete, you can click Save, and now your new default policy is there. The default policy is automatically assigned to your applications, so you'll see them here on the Resources tab. However, you can change that at any point when you make a new custom policy. To make a new custom policy, you go back to the Policies page and click Add New Policy. Here we start with a single rule, but you can remove this, edit it, or add new ones on top of it. So let's say we'll add our user risk score and we want to say prompt if the user risk is high or extreme. Update. And then we'll say we want to add for country restrictions. We will say not to prompt if it is in the United States. And we'll update it here. You can also drag and reorder these to change the priority of which one is checked first. Once you're done, hit Save. And then we can move on to your blocking rules. The difference between blocking rules and authentication rules, blocking rules will stop the user as they try to access the application. Authentication rules, you can select whether they will be prompted for multi-factor authentication or they can bypass that step and go straight to the application. To create your list of blocking rules, the process is the same. Click Add New Rule and make any configurations. For example, you can restrict it by group here by blocking those that are not in a specific user group. Once you have your authentication and blocking rules in place, click Save and you can move on to the multi-factor methods. Select your workflow type, so how do you want the users to log in? Let's say username, MFA, and password. And then you will select the MFA methods that you would like enabled for this policy. This list is generated from the global settings that you configured previously. So if you have a method that you'd like to use that is not listed here, you'll need to enable it in the global settings before you can enable it here. 
let's say we want this one to be a little bit more secure. So we will not allow the TOTP and we don't want to use text message or email. So instead we're going to allow the login notification to do symbol to accept or biometric identification and we'll click save. To edit the name it's very simple here instead of new custom policy we will call this secure policy and save. Now your policy is created and you can add resources to the policy by clicking the resources tab here and then select resources for this policy. All of your available applications will display and you simply need to check one or multiple that you'd like and then click save. These resources now will use this new secure policy instead of the default policy and you're ready to go. With your policy and MFA methods configured, you can now move on to the Application Manager to integrate Office 365. The Application Manager will show the list of all of your currently integrated applications, which can easily be edited by clicking the Edit icon here, but instead we're going to add an application. You can select a generic SAML or WS Federation application, or you can choose one from our numerous application templates. The application template library can be updated or enhanced at any point, so you don't have to wait for a new version of IDP to get the latest application templates. You can scroll through to find the application that you want, or you can use the search bar to quickly find the one that you need. Click Select and go ahead. On this initial screen, you can provide some basic details about the integration, including an updated application name, an internal application description, and you can upload a new logo if you'd like. Here you will select your authentication policy. This list is populated by the list of policies that you have configured in the policy section. You always have your factory default policy, which will be the one selected always. If you want to choose a different policy, simply click that instead. Select the data store that you've integrated where your users reside, and then you can restrict the access to any groups. Or you can simply say, allow every group in your selected data store to access this application. And then click continue. For the user ID profile field, the description tells me this is the object GUID, which I've already mapped to my aux ID 2, so there's nothing I need to do here. The SecureAuth public hostname is the fully qualified domain name of your SecureAuth appliance per this tooltip, so that's easy enough to configure. The Office 365 login URL is optional per this tooltip, so I'm going to leave it blank. Everything else seems fine to me, with the exception of me requiring a certificate. Select that and move on. I am not using legacy Office 365, so I do not need the endpoints. However, it's incredibly easy to enable that simply by switching the toggle. There are attributes required out of the box here, and the namespace tells me this is the UPN, the user principal name, which I have mapped to aux ID 1. And then the immutable ID is the same as the object good, which we've mapped to aux ID 2. Now I can add application. Okay. Now my application was added successfully. Here's some information and I'm ready to go. Now my application has been added successfully. I see some information for my service provider that I can use on that side of the configuration, including login, logout URL, the issuer, and my certificate that I can download. Unique to Office 365 is this PowerShell script that I can click to copy so that when I run PowerShell for Office 365, I already have most of the values inputted and it makes it easier for me. On the summary page, I can see everything about my Office 365 integration, including my login URL here, the data store connection, I can access my info for service providers at any point, and I can also see the authentication policy selected here, which is my secure policy. If I want to edit that here, I simply click the edit icon and instead select the default policy. Update settings. And now we're good. So it's listed here as factory default policy, and if I went back to my policies and looked at my default policies, I would now see under resources, Office 365. And that's how easy it is to integrate Office 365 with the SecureAuth identity platform with adaptive authentication and various multi-factor authentication methods. Thanks for joining us today. To learn more, visit www.secureauth.com.